You can't imagine how many times I get called in the middle of the night because a patient wants something to help him or her poop. How to minimize receiving such calls and treat constipation in hospitalized patients is the topic of today's video. This is the third video of our series, first week of residency tips. A link to the previous two videos is provided below. Let's start. Constipation is a common issue in inpatient settings for different reasons. Medication side effects, lack of ambulation, changing meal habits and types, electrolyte disturbances, and dehydration. Asking our patients about bowel movement is one of my daily rounding checklists, which I will discuss later in this series. The best strategy to treat constipation in hospitalized patients is to prevent it if possible. So how do we do that? In all of my patients, I follow this five-step approach. First, get them out of bed and ambulate as early as possible and as much as possible. Ambulation is powerful in helping our bowels move. I tell all my patients they need to get out of bed as much as possible and only go back to bed for sleep. I communicate that to their nurses and consult PT if needed. Second, adequate hydration. I encourage my patients to drink an adequate amount of water unless they need a fluid restriction. If they are NPO for one reason or another, I consider adding IV fluids if NPO status is going to be prolonged. Don't forget to correct any electrolyte disturbances. The fourth step is to prescribe a scheduled bulking agent or a stool softener unless my patient is presenting with diarrhea. And the fifth and final step is to prescribe osmotic or stimulant laxatives only on as needed basis or PRN. For patients on home laxatives, we simply continue them again if not presenting with diarrhea. Now is the perfect time to go over the commonly used laxatives in inpatient settings. But before that, if you would like to receive a summary of this video or access the previous video summaries, please subscribe to my Substack page. The link is provided below. Laxatives are categorized into bulking agents, stool softeners, osmotic agents, stimulants, and lubricants. Opioid antagonists and 5-HT4 receptor agonists are expensive and not available in most hospitals in the USA, and I will not be discussing them today. Bulk forming laxatives are considered the gentlest and work by adding soluble fibers to the stool, which drives water into our stool, making it bigger and softer. In turn, this will stimulate the colon to contract and push the stool out. They are slow acting and their effect is seen from 12 to 72 hours from administration. Examples of bulk agents are psyllium seeds, metamucil, and methylcellulose. Stool softeners are also called emollient laxatives. They increase the water and fat the stool absorbs, softening it. Like bulking agents, they are slow acting and their effect is seen from 12 to 72 hours from administration. An example of this is docusate sodium. Osmotic laxatives draw water into the lumen to increase intestinal peristalsis as the water collects its softens the stool so it's easier to pass. They typically work within one to two days. Example of this are polyethylene glycol and lactulose. Saline laxatives are a more potent type of osmotic laxatives. They contain salt that hold water in our colon. They are fast acting and typically work within hours. Example of this are magnesium hydroxide or milk of magnesia and magnesium citrate. Stimulant laxatives activate sensory nerves endings in and promote colonic motility and reduce colonic water absorption. They are fast acting and typically work within 12 to 24 hours. Examples include bisacodyl and senna. Lubricant laxatives coat our colon making it slick. The coating prevent our colon from absorbing water from our stool so it stays soft. It makes it also a slippery passage that makes defecation easier. They are fast acting and typically work within hours. An example of this type is mineral oil. Enemas which are personally a last resort option is the fastest to work. An example of this is sodium phosphate enema and saline enemas. So laxatives can be further categorized into fast acting, intermediate and slow acting. Stool softeners and bulking agents are considered slow acting. Osmotic laxatives like polyethylene glycol and lactulose and stimulants like bisacodyl and senna are considered intermediate acting. Saline laxatives, lubricants and enemas are considered fast acting. Laxatives comes in pills as in docusate sodium, bisacodyl and senna, powders as in polyethylene glycol and metamucil, liquids and syrup as in lactulose, magnesium hydroxide, magnesium citrate and mineral oil, 
suppository as in bezacodyl enemas such as sodium phosphate enemas, bezacodyl enemas, and saline enema. The five-step approach we mentioned earlier is effective in preventing constipation and minimizing phone calls related to this matter. But how about if the patient is already constipated? The first thing I do here is to apply the five-step approach we mentioned earlier, if not applied already. Ambulation, adequate hydration, optimization of electrolytes, and starting a scheduled scheduled bulking agent or stool softeners. Metamucil 30 gram a day all at once or in divided doses can be used as a bulking agent or docusate sodium 100 milligram PO twice daily as a softener. Remember these steps are unlikely to produce a quick result. They may take two to three days as we mentioned. The next step depends on the severity of constipation and how quickly the patient would like to have a bowel movement. If the patient is requesting something relatively mild and not quick, I add a scheduled osmotic laxative such as lactulose 30 ml every 6 to 8 hours or polyethylene glycol 17 gram daily. I also have them drink prune juice if possible. If they would like to have something stronger and have a bowel movement within 24 hours, I add a scheduled stimulant laxative, scheduled not PRN, such as Senna 8.4 milligram one tab orally twice daily or bezacodyl 10 milligram orally once daily if the patient is requesting something quick and strong saline laxative magnesium hydroxide or citrates are the ones i go for magnesium hydroxide or magnesium citrate 30 ml every eight hours for two days or until a bowel movement is a good choice for severe cases i go for one of these three options magnesium citrate 30 ml every two hours until bowel movements or finish the whole bottle which is 300 ml the second choice is to drink 4 gallons of polyethylene glycol or golightly which is mainly used for colon prep before colonoscopy. And third option use an enema, sodium phosphate or saline enema. Once bowel movement is achieved, I change osmotic or stimulant laxatives from scheduled back to PRN or as needed. But I keep bulking agent and stool softener whichever we use as scheduled. Remember stool impaction needs manual disimpaction or enema otherwise it will be very hard to have a bowel movement with just oral laxatives. Now, are there any precautions for using laxatives? The main question or concern I get is using magnesium products in patients with renal failure. I only get concerns in patients with advanced renal failure, creatinine clearance less than 30 ml per minute, who are not on dialysis yet. In such patients, it's better to avoid using magnesium products unless they are hypomagnesemic. It is not a big deal to use them in compliant dialysis patients because dialysis will eliminate any excess magnesium. Abdominal cramps and bloating are some of the manageable common side effects of most of these laxatives. And we should not shy away from using them just because these side effects. Diarrhea may develop with these laxatives. This happens mainly when we don't ask about bowel movements during our rounds, as some patients won't tell you unless you ask specifically about that. And we forget to switch osmotic or stimulant laxatives back to PRN once a bowel movement is achieved. If diarrhea develops, discontinue all kind of laxatives including bulking agents and stool softeners. In most cases, diarrhea will resolve within one to two days. In the end, if you found this video useful, please give it a like, share it with your colleagues, and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Remember that you can get a summary of this video and access the previous summaries by subscribing to my Substack page. And I would like to invite you to join my new Telegram where I post interesting stuff over there. Thanks for watching and see you soon.